welcome, Oprah. She is the undisputed queen of television. And on the last few episodes of her talk show, Oprah Winfrey was given an A-list send-off. Oprah Winfrey, today you are surrounded by nothing but love. Over the past 25 years, Oprah has shared plenty of her own love around. While her interviews with celebrities have often generated headlines, the TV host has tackled serious issues such as racism, gender inequality, homophobia, infidelity and addiction without flinching. Oprah got America reading with the launch of her own book club. Hello, everybody. She even funded her own girls boarding school in South Africa. In short, the big O is everywhere, sitting on top of a multimedia empire with an estimated value of $2 billion. Her success is considered even more remarkable because she's a woman and an African-American. It's virtually impossible to overstate the impact, the power of a product endorsement by Oprah Winfrey. Over the years, she's given her stamp of approval to anything from chocolates to computers, from books to bath salts, and everything she's touched has turned to gold. They call it the Oprah effect. Sometimes just being near her is enough. The Wishbone restaurant is one block away from Harpo Studios. All right. Chef owner Joel Nixon opened the business 20 years ago and has been basking in Oprah's glow ever since. Uh, the show is just a part of it. Uh, and, you know, whenever they are taping, we always do see a good 10 to 15 percent bump in sales uh, just from audience members and stuff like that. But there's, there's the all year round factor, too. But perhaps it is Chicago itself that has benefited the most from Oprah's presence. The mayor showing the city's appreciation by naming a street in her honour. That's better than an Oscar. <laughs> For Oprah's legions of fans, it's the end of an era. I miss you. Their loyalty is to a woman who has triumphed over her own personal battles and made them believe they can do the same. Kath Turner, Al Jazeera, Chicago. Well, Muna Abu Suleiman is a talk show host who broadcasts in the Middle East. She's been described as Saudi Arabia's Oprah. I asked her how much of an influence Oprah Winfrey had been on her career. Well, of course, um, um, Oprah started in 1984, which is the year that I returned to the U.S. from living abroad. And so it coincided that um, her work is really, um, you know, one of the uh, defining moments of one's life because you grew up seeing a particular type of TV personality and me being the other in the States, I don't look like most uh, of my friends uh, in, in uh, Virginia. Uh, you find somebody who is different and who's able to actually touch people's um, emotions. Uh, that was very interesting. So spinning forward, you now have your own talk show. And I'm a little bit interested in that because given the, the cultural taboos of the region, there must be uh, a great many issues that, that you can't cover, is that right? What sort of things do you cover? Um, I used to be on Kalam Nawaim on NBC, which is a, a show that was co-hosted by four women. And uh, I'm working on my own TV show right now, but it hasn't uh, solidified yet. It's not on, t uh, it's not on air. Uh, the thing is, of course, the Middle East just 20 years ago is not the same as the Middle East today. What I would have been able to um, say were the, dif you know, the red lines um, are quite different. There is an openness that wasn't there. Uh, for example, when we used to uh, work on Kalam Nawaim, we had to really be very careful on how to phrase the issue so that you don't... Um, the whole mission was to actually help change people's perceptions, uh, to help them change their lives. And it's not about sensationalism or getting people's defenses up, uh, making them feel that you're attacking their values or, or themselves. And so this was a very delicate line of how do you really balance that. And we were very successful in it. Um, now that's not needed anymore. People can actually um, understand that when you're uh, discussing an issue, it's about the issue, not themselves. Major change because of the Arab Spring. All right. Well, of course, uh, there is a counter argument to all this uh, that, you know, despite the fanfare that Oprah is getting right now, there are those who say that she was she's, she heralded the, the start of the dumbing down of television, just reducing it to a base level. What do you say to that? Oh, I don't think so. There's always, you know, um, great things on TV and stupid things on TV. And, you know, she has nothing to do with reality TV. Um, I think Oprah herself 
is very inspirational. Um, her personality, uh, her ability to actually climb up the ladder to the very top, despite what you might say, um, triple jeopardy, being a woman, uh, being African-American, and of course not fitting the stereotype of what um, a TV uh, personality looks like uh, weight-wise. Uh, and despite all these issues, she was able to go on. Um, she's a role model to many women of what they can accomplish. Uh, her show in particular was popular all over the world. You cannot be popular all over the world if you're dumbing down things. You can only be popular if you're actually connecting with people. 